will learn more about an exciting partnership that will significantly, and I do mean significantly, impact the future of our community and its residents. The city of Greenville is thrilled to join in the efforts of Greenville Region Workforce Collaboration to bring its Career Skills Now program to the residents of West Greenville and the city as a whole. West Greenville, like other pockets of the community, is experiencing unemployment in some places as high as 48 percent. This trip is triple the rate of other parts of the county. Career Skills Now is an innovative job training and placement program developed through various stakeholders, city and county government, businesses, private funders, nonprofits, elected officials, the Workforce Investment Board, Greenville Technical College, and most importantly, the residents of this community. At the United Way, we absolutely believe in the power of collaboration and the great things that we can accomplish when we all work together. Career Skills Now is definitely proof of that commitment. The road to financial stability can be viewed as a three-point journey. The first stop along the journey is increasing income. The second stop is building savings, and the destination is gaining and sustaining assets like home ownership and higher education. Individuals and families cannot move along the journey without first increasing income. This is a significant issue for so many in our community who may not possess the skills and the training that they need to move away from low-wage jobs and on to sustainable career paths. Career Skills Now represents an important effort to close that gap. Last year, Bank of America announced a new strategy when it came to our charitable foundation. And at the head of that strategy was workforce development. And the reason that we announced a new strategy and emphasized workforce development is that over the past few years, we've been having conversations with a lot of, a lot of different organizations, nonprofit organizations, local politicians, businesses, small and great, our clients, and even our teammates to better understand what the issues are that are affecting our communities and the families that live in them. And through, this, through these conversations, one thing was apparent, that the, at the bottom line, jobs was affecting everyone. Jobs was affecting families, jobs were affecting businesses, and to be quite honest, jobs was affecting our country as a whole. So as we looked at our workforce strategy and how Bank of America could make a difference in the jobs arena, it became, important, it became apparent that we needed to focus on helping people get the skills that they needed in order to obtain the jobs that were, that were available. And not just the skills that they needed to obtain jobs that were available, but the skills that were needed to obtain the jobs that were where they live, in the industries where they live. So as we looked, about, as we looked at it, it became important that we help people have the skills to get the jobs, had the skills to maintain the jobs, and then wanted to make sure that we were supporting organizations that also connected them to the companies that had the jobs available. And as Ted alluded to, part of that is ensuring that not only do they get gainful employment, but they have the training and the education necessary in order to be successful in financial matters long term, so they could gather the assets and could begin to achieve those things they wanted to for their family. As a company doing business in Greenville, it's important that this area maintains that economic vibrancy that it's had in the past, and that we're tuned in to helping that happen. So we all know Greenville's a great place to live. It's why I live here, it's probably why all of us live here. And that over the past decade, this area has seen a lot of success, a lot of economic momentum. And when we looked at it, we realized the only way to continue that economic momentum is to ensure that when businesses look at Greenville County to come and bring their businesses here, that we have the workforce to support those businesses to continue to attract the industries that's making this one of the best places to live in the country and continue that forward momentum that we have. Career Skills Now provides technical training and career coaching services for low to moderate income candidates who seek to become employed, in this case, in advanced manufacturing uh, jobs. 
While many of the positions with the, within the transportation manufacturing field are available now and expected to increase in number, employers tell us that the issue is that the vast majority of the region's unemployed and underemployed workforce don't match the skills needed for the position. At its core then, the program works on serving two primary customers, employers and workers. You heard Brian and Lillian and Ted all talk about collaboration and that's really what the program is about. It's the collaboration of having employers at the table so that you can match up people successfully with them. Uh, we began to provide this connection in October 2011, and it combines several key components that, that I think are important to understanding how this works and, and what's required moving forward. First of all, it has an intensive case management structure that works from the outset of the process up through employment and then into employment retention. There are multiple tiers of training involved in the process so that people can begin at the level where they are, and have the opportunity to progress at their own pace. Um, we provide supportive services so that people can make it through the program. We're asking people to go through a, an 11 week process. Once they get into training, the process before that can stretch out for some time. And supportive services are things that help them get things like bus passes or gas money, uh, test fees, equipment fees. We've even paid some admission fees for people moving on into higher education at Greenville Tech after the process is over. Um, and then the fourth part is the engagement employers as part of the process. The employers helped us define the training curriculum. Um, they then have uh, begun hiring our folks and once we moved into the work experience piece that we're doing now, they provided slots for people to come in and work at their locations while they're in the training class. Um, the fifth piece of it is the focus on attaining higher level, level skills. Everybody this morning has talked about sus sustainability as being part of the workforce solution. And part of what we are trying to qualify people to do and to encourage them to do and point them in the right direction to do is to move into the further training that's required. We help people get jobs. But the ultimate goal is for them not just to get the job, but to get the job after that the next job up the chain in that career ladder. And that's a very important piece of what we do. Now, to be accepted into the program, um, applicants need to meet a set of minimum requirements. Uh, the first one is to have the work key silver level or higher career readiness certificate. Um, if you don't know what that is, it's a national certification that says you meet um, certain requirements in applied math, uh, reading, and uh, locating information. Um, Career Skills now understands that every applicant uh, may not have heard of work keys in the first place, and most of our applicants don't come to us with that certification. But it's necessary to understand that people have the ability to meet the requirements of both the classroom and the uh, work experience piece of it. Um, we provide the testing for free. We'll, we'll help people prepare for the work keys assessment. Um, it's an important part. The second thing is to be able to pass a drug test. The third part is to have a satisfactory background check. And what that simply means is uh, we look at people's backgrounds from a criminal record standpoint. It doesn't have to be spotless. We can work with people in some cases to help them through the process, but it does have to be at some level satisfactory. The fourth piece is to have a GED or high school diploma. And the fifth piece is intangible. Um, people don't walk up to us and say, I want in the program, and we say, sure, come on in. We put them through a little bit of a process to make sure that they're motivated, uh, that they have the ability to do the work, that they have a little to create a word stick to itiveness about them, um, that they really want in the program. Because this isn't a simple or easy thing that we're doing. It provides a very good opportunity, but it's not simple. Um, after applicants have been accepted into the program, they begin an 11 week training process that we call Earn While You Learn because we've tied in federal money in this case that allows us to pay them a stipend for that work experience piece of it. The employers provide the uh, training slots and the folks get paid for the 40 hours a week that they're working 
uh, during this 11 week period. So they wind up with five weeks of paid work experience as well as getting these certifications. Um, they alternate between classes, first two weeks in class, the next week at work, and then they alternate on a weekly basis between class and work. We start two classes back to back so that the employers always have a person in that slot they created. When one person's in class, the next person's at work and they switch off. It's essentially job sharing. Um, what it does for the students is very important in that it provides a pathway that most of them, or you or me for that example, if you've looked for a job lately, would find very difficult to locate. Um, it gives the students exposure to the employers. The employers have the option of hiring the students after the program is over. We provide some incentives once again through some dollars through one of our partners to, to sweeten the pot for the employers. We give them training and certification and recognize industry standards, in this case, the nationally recognized Manufacturers Skill Standards Council, MSSC, uh, certifications in quality and safety. Uh, as I said, five weeks of paid on the job income while they're in the program. Um, since late 2011, when we began, we've trained more than 120 individuals through eight training classes. Over 70 percent of the people that we've involved in training so far have either found direct jobs or moved into further training. Some chose to go straight into in-demand job training programs at Greenville Tech, such as um, machine tool technology or mechatronics, which are both highly in-demand um, jobs right now in our market. In Greenville County, we've set a goal of 2013 to get another 150 to 200 people through our job training pipeline. Bank of America's money helps us to do that in a very specific way here. Um, additionally, while we offer the program uh, currently just in Greenville County, a major long-term goal is to do this on a regional basis. Uh, this is a very unique collaboration in that if you think about pulling together all the uh, nonprofits in Greenville County, if you think about all the governmental entities from municipal through state through federal funding sources, and you think about all the various silos that represents, it's, it's not a simple thing to do, but yet it's been done here, and that's why it works. That's what Bank of America recognized about the process. Uh, we're pleased with the success we've had so far. Uh, we look forward to even more local and regional success as the program continues. Uh, I would like to say thank you to all the, particularly our nonprofits that help us recruit students, provide case management, and do all that underlying work that you never see that helps get people to the table, because that's what really is important here. We have some information sessions coming up specifically for this community. Um, and we want to see people show up. If you heard me say something qualification-wise that you thought, yeah, I don't know if I'm there or not, come anyway, um, because we can't help you unless we understand the starting point of where you are. Uh, tomorrow, Thursday, January 24th at noon here. Uh, Thursday, January 20, 31st at 1 p.m. at the Sterling Hope Community Center. Uh, Thursday, February 7th at 6 p.m. at the Hughes Library. That would be the downtown library. Uh, Wednesday, February 13th, 10 a.m. back here at the West Greenville Community Center. If you need those, come ask me afterwards, and I'll be happy to, to give you that information again. Again, thanks to Brian, Bank of America, to all our funders. Um, you're making a difference. Uh, we're doing something unique. I don't think there's anything like this in a multi-state area and it is making a difference. Um, and we want to make a difference specifically in this community as well. So thanks for being here today. We've long said a long time ago that you can't do anything in isolation. And until everybody yeah. realizes that we're all in this together and that we have to pull together, it makes it easier. Uh, and I don't understand why others don't understand that, but I am just so happy to be in Greenville. <laughs> I am so happy to be in Greenville and to be with partners, uh, in particular when um, the United Way brought us in uh, because uh, of the great unemployment in this area. Um, we are just so excited because it means that we're not just talking, we are trying to, to make a difference. But as it's been said before, nothing will happen unless you help us. There are people you know, relatives you may have, cousins, church members, whatever, somebody you know who will do well in this program, 
who this program can make a difference in your life. I invited a lot of you here for that reason, because it's by word of mouth. One of the unique qualities of this program is that it is a collaboration. Suppose they don't meet criteria X, Y, and Z, and there's three or more. They can refer them to another agency that will help them get so they can get back to that program. So the, 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 the reason that this is so beautiful and that it works is that all gaps, see people have been falling through the cracks. People have been falling through the cracks because, yeah, I don't meet this criteria, go next door, don't meet that criteria. But because it is a collaboration that we can take you where you are. You may not make this, but you could make something else. That could be a program that somebody else may have that may meet your criteria that you work at a hotel or something of that name. I'm just saying it could be something else. But because it is a collaboration, it will cover the gamut, and we're trying to stop the gaps of people not being able to find a place to work. And so I'm passionate, I guess. I'm on, because uh, <laughs> I'm on Advanced SC, and we're trying to work, we work with manufacturing as well. And one of the things that companies say to us is that they have the jobs, the 18, 19, 20 dollar an hour jobs. They don't have the people. A lot of people are afraid to apply because they don't think they will qualify. Because they see that number, no, I don't have the skills. And then when you come through this program, you'll find out, yes, like that young man, yes, you may have the skills, you just need a little dusting off. And we will help with that and, and move forward. Um, and as you heard, they piloted it from 2011 because you had to see will it work. And so since it's piloted 2011, they saw that it does work. So now we want to tell everybody that it does work. And we hope that all of you will help us make it work. We want to make it such that, that Brian going to have to go out and find some more friends, get some more money. <laughs> some more friends to get some more money to put into this program. That's what I'm saying. We want it to be such that, uh, that, that Share and Goodwill and SC Works and Greenville County Workforce and the school district, we want them. Uh, right now, the school district has been using this, because I work for the school district, so, and a lot of people hadn't heard of it, so we've introduced them. And it's a requirement. Well, it's a national requirement just about for everybody to do work keys. It says that you can read, write, and, and disseminate information. And we don't discriminate by race, color, or ethnicity. If you're not an American citizen, we want you as well. Because we want everybody to work that can work. Thank y'all so very much. You made our day. Thank you.